for life. Hey, it's Chris Homestead Hardway. And uh, if y'all watch this, you know that I do things everybody else don't do. We we talk to our viewers, and uh, we try to help them solve problems, you know. And the last couple of weeks, we've been talking to several different people and trying to get them started in the small farm homestead thing. And the subject has come up over and over again of what can make and break you. And I think that's something we need to do a video on. I think that's some information that people need. The first thing that can really cause you problems, um, it's kind of a two-part thing, is unrealistic goals and false information. Unrealistic goals will get you in trouble faster than anything in the world. Now, I've told you a thousand times, I'm sure I've seen other YouTube videos saying the same thing. If you read the comments in my videos, you'll see all the people agreeing that this year we had the same experience. Um, this is not a get rich quick scheme. The, the small farm is not a get rich quick scheme. The idea of being totally self sufficient is close to impossible. You're not going to do it. You're not going to live without money. I think that's a lot of people's fantasies. They're fairy tale. They're gonna live without money. They're going they're gonna have a small farm and grow what they eat. It's gonna be a little house on the prairie, and they're gonna trade and barter. And they don't need any money. It's not gonna happen, folks. It's not gonna happen. I don't know about maybe in the outback of Alaska, but around here, it's not gonna happen. Not in a modern, you know, 2024 America. It's not. Gonna does that mean you shouldn't do it? You shouldn't strive for it? You shouldn't try to do the best you can? No, go for it. Go for it. Um, there's, there's nothing wrong with trying. But just remember, you're not going to be self-sufficient. You're going to need some money for something. Uh, false information. Information, you know, that looks real good, that sounds good, but won't work. That's a major problem. We deal with that every day. Well, I've seen this YouTube video, that YouTube video, they're all saying the same thing. They all say the same thing because somebody put up a video, got a bunch of views, made a little money, everybody copied. The information is not any good. Sometimes the information is not any good for you. Just won't work where you're at, won't work what you're trying to do. Sometimes the information is just a total fabrication. That's the thing, I promise. I have no reason not to. We're not professional YouTubers. We're not doing this channel to make money. I'm not trying to say you nothing. I'm just trying to help you out. Some of it is just fabrication. Um, most time you kind of tell if, if you know anything about this, you can watch it and you can tell in the first ten minutes that it's all clickbait. It's it's a story to get you to watch the video so they get that. The next thing we run into. And I understand when you go to buy a piece of property, you can't really exactly get whatever you want. You've got to get what's available. But something we see a lot is people will purchase a piece of property to small farm homestead on that is not suitable for that purpose. The land's not any good. Um, you can't make it any good without spending a bunch of money. Bunch of soil amendments, years of, of trying, and it still won't be any better than it was when you started. You had to resort to everything's in a raised bed. Uh, that's just common. Uh, now, I'm sure it's not like this everywhere, but here in East North Carolina, we are. Any piece of land that's fit to be farmed is being farmed. Period. If it's fit to farm, unless it's just some little two or three acre leftover piece beside somebody's house, other than that, if it's, if it's tendable land, it's being tended. If it's grown up in woods, that means that sometime in the past, somebody made a decision, this feels too sorry to keep trying to plant, we're just going to let it grow up. That's just the way it is. The other thing you run into is say you got a 50 acre farm, grandmama dies, they sell the place. You ain't going to sell the place. Well, it's 50 acres, got a house, back of barn, pack house, whatever on it, um, hog lots, whatever the old man had, you know. Well, they, they'll split it up. They'll bust off you know, between one and five acres with the house, and they'll sell the rest of the arable land to the next door farmer. And uh, what's left is your homestead. And it's, like I said, between usually two to five acres right around the house. 
and nobody ever brings up that you put your houses and your pack houses and your chicken coops and your bog pens and tobacco barns and your shop and everything that's on the land is too sorry to farm. If you just look around here where we built everything at, I guess what, six years ago, my daddy built all this stuff, most of it, we built it on the dead sand where it was too sorry to farm. It's on a dead sand hill. That's the reason it's here. We didn't take up any farmland. Every little ancient farmland is precious. So if you're going to build a house, you build it somewhere that you're not taking up farmland. People don't seem to know that, don't think about it. But yet again, any little piece of wood you can buy cheap, it may not be, that may not be true in the Ozarks or somewhere, but at least around here, a lot of times it's not what you call arable, tendable land. We covered unreasonable expectations, having a piece of dirt that's suitable, false information, what's next? Money? Resources. Resources, money and resources. And this is a kind of a catch-22. We're out here now, first off, I want to say this, um, we are not off-grid, we are not out in the middle of nowhere, we're in a fairly rural area, but we have neighbors, that's why you hear dogs barking in the background, cars, four-wheelers. They just came through, the ambulance just came through, we had to stop the video. Um, we're not out in the middle of nowhere. We're in a sim fairly rural agricultural community. And what that means is I have plenty of resources available. If I want hog feed, hog feed is 10 minutes down the road. If I want stuff to make hog feed weed, it's five minutes down the road. Um, all my friends are farmers. All my family is farmers. Uh, I have access to equipment that's obsolete to them because they're big farmers and I'm a little tiny farmer and it's cheap or free. You know, cousin Ralph, I, I need a two row, I need a one row transplanter. I'm gonna, I'm gonna plant a bunch of cobblers next year. But I believe there's one in the woods back there. I ain't never gonna use it again. If you want it, go get it. There's a lot of resources available. We're also in kind of homesteader central. So what that means is there's people move in constantly or they just move from town out to the country and they want goats or pigs or chickens or whatever. And they usually do it for a year, attend a garden for a year, and then they're through with it. So it's nothing, I mean, they don't want to do it anymore. It's not fun, it's not what they thought it was gonna be. So there's, like this week, somebody's given me several gates, tubing gates, uh, fence post, especially livestock equipment, is readily available for free. It's in my way, man, come get it. Uh, I had somebody call me this week, want to give me a bunch of fans. They said, my way, come get it. We're not ever going to have goats anymore. We're not messing with horses anymore. So you have a lot of resources available. If you're in the wrong place and you can't buy corn straight from a farmer, or you can't go to the mill and buy a bag of chicken feed for $12, you got to go to somewhere like Tractor Spine and get it for $27, it might be hard to do. Um, and if you're leaning towards more of the small farm thing than the homestead thing, it may fix it where there's no profit available. And if you're doing a homestead thing and you're trying to grow your own food that's better quality for less than grocery store, it may fix it where you would be cheaper to go buy it. Which means you have to have the disposable income to invest more in your food supply. And yes, you can free range your chickens and feed them kind of sort of for free. And that works great if something comes through and kills them. All. And that happens a lot. And we've talked about this before, no matter how many livestock guardian dogs you got, uh, what else you do, unless you fence your whole property in in a predator-proof fence, which I think, if you could afford to do it, would be the absolute best idea ever. A six-foot-tall predator-proof fence around your whole piece of land would be wonderful. But who could afford to do that? Just little things you don't think about. Um, we don't even view chickens. Chickens around here are disposable. I've come home 400 times in my life and gone from having 50 chickens to having two. Uh, if all else fails, your own dog will kill them. I mean, it's bad things happen to chickens. My wife said they're not an idiot. You know, turkey's worse. But having some resources and having some money, you've got to have some money. Money's always the biggest hold up on everything you ever going to do. There's not a lot of profit in this. You know, getting back to where in a farming community, well, we sell produce, we sell eggs, we sell this, we sell that. But the problem is everybody's got it. The market's flipped. So what we have to do is we have to produce it here, and then we have to take it somewhere that they don't produce it to sell it. Raise it where you can grow it cheap, take it somewhere you sell it high. And being the basically. first one to have it during the season. And being the first one to have it. We found that out. Being the first one or the only one to have something. 
Uh, we've had a lot of success being the only person that grows. And something else we've run into, and this kind of boggles my mind, the market changes constantly. And things you think would really sell, that have always sold really good before, that you think would really sell, won't. One day they just won't sell. And things you think you, you've never been able to sell before, or there'll be zero demand for that year, it may be the bumper, it may be the, the money crop. Um, and there's really no way to predict it. That's why we try to be so diversified and plant so much different stuff. The one good thing about having pigs and produce, they tie in pretty good together because if we have produce we can't sell, we can feed to the pigs. It's not a total loss. Nothing gets wasted. Of course, I told you before, you'd be shocked and amazed what a pig won't eat. There's a lot of stuff a pig won't eat. We have spoiled pigs. Well, we may have spoiled pigs, but there's a lot of stuff they just, unless you chop it up. If you run it through a chopper, they'll eat it. But if you just throw a cucumber in there, they're not going to. You're going to have to have money. Uh, like we told you before, this is not a get-rich-quick scheme. Uh, you're not going to be totally self-sufficient, not need money, trading, bartering, all this stuff, that fairy tale. It's not going to happen. You're going to need some money. And I know a lot of people are going to say, well, we're not doing this to make any money. We're doing it to feed ourselves. That's great. That's an obtainable goal. Just understand it's going to cost you a little something to do it with. But some tips I'm going to give you on that. It shouldn't be costing you a fortune. If you're spending bunches and bunches of money tending gardens, you're you're not you're, you're doing something wrong. If you have livestock and it's just breaking you to feed your livestock, you just can't afford to feed them. You're doing something a little bit wrong. You've got too much. Um, you're doing something in an inefficient manner. And tying into that, a trap you can fall into real easy is do not turn into a hobby farm. Do not turn into an animal rescue. Uh, do not get everything that's free on Facebook. If you're really trying to do this, that, you, that's just what you don't need. To do. You don't need to get all your livestock off what was for free on Facebook and just have them for pets and feed them because it's a dead drain. It's expensive and you're not getting anything out of it. Avoid that trap. I'm a horse guy, mule guy, I really like mules. Every once in a while, we'll, I'll fall for that myself. I'll get a pair of mules or a mule, and I'm not in physical condition to walk behind one anymore with my health being bad, and they're just a dead draw. They're expensive to keep up, and we'll do it. No, we shouldn't. It's a mistake. We're dog people. We've got a pack of dogs. Mm -hmm. They are a mistake. Yes, they probably are one of the reasons why we have anything with the amount of predators we have around here. They do help. They're not foolproof. They're not an end-all, be-all solution, but they do help. And they do help with the people problem a little bit. It's one of the reasons people don't take mess off from the worst they do. Zoning. Do you want to? Zoning. Zoning, yeah, you've got to worry about zoning. I think we covered that when we were talking about, you know, could you do what you want to do on your piece of dirt? The other thing that we've run into, and talking to people, and I've run into it in the past myself, is your family not being on board. That's a game ender. If you're going to have a lot of trouble with your kids not wanting to do it, it's not fun. It can be fun, but most of them would whole lot rather play video games, do whatever, than get out here and do this work. It don't matter what you try to do, they're not interested. A lot of them. Some of them are. Most of them ain't. That's normal. Don't think you're doing something wrong because your 12-year-old would rather die than feed chickens. That's kind of normal. It'll break your heart, but it's kind of normal. They're not interested. They don't care anything about it. That's bad. But when your spouse is not interested or doesn't care anything about it or is down or out against it, completely against it, you've got trouble. That's an insurmountable obstacle. Doing this by yourself, I have done it right, just me and the kids. I have done it by myself for a few years. That's difficult. But trying to do it with a spouse that is totally against you, that's fighting you every step of the way, is impossible. You need to make sure of that before you start.
And you need to make sure that you're willing to do it yourself. Getting back to the fairy tale, milking cows is hard. Uh, just looking after a piece of property without the farm on it is hard. If you look at all your daily maintenance, you know, what you have to do to keep a house up and keep property up, it's hard. And if you work a 60 hour a week job, it's hard. I mean, it's, it's not easy. And then you add farm chores and tenant livestock and big gardens and all everything that goes along with a garden because there's more to it than growing it. You've got to grow it, you've got to store it, you've got to put it up, can it, freeze it, whatever, and cook it. It's a lot of work. You need, you need to make sure you can do it before you start. Because we see too many people that start it and they last about a year. That's pretty normal. It's about a year, maybe two. You need to make sure you're physically able to do it and you've got the mentality that you want to do it because it takes some dedication. <clears throat> some things that will help you. Um... Learning your local market, if you're trying to do stuff to sell, learning your local market as far as sales. Um, learning where to get some good information. Learning where to get some good local information. So I can help you as much as I can. I can tell you just general stuff, stuff that works for me. But if you're in a totally different area, different soil type, different climate, I can't help you but so much. I do what I can, but I can't help you but so much. You need good local information. Uh, we said that before, we can't say it enough. Figuring out, you know, what you need to do and what you don't need to do, what's important. Learn that there's no need to grow something if you're not going to eat it. Uh, learn that there's no need to, you know, if you want to raise rabbits, then you find out that your wife or kids or your husband and kids will not eat a, a, a tame rabbit under no circumstances then there's really no reason to raise rabbits. I mean, you, you work with any limitations. Maybe a better way to put it. Learn how to work with any limitations. And like we told you before, money, money, money. Everything always comes down to money. Uh, make sure you can afford to do it. Because if you're homesteading and you're raising livestock for food, they've got to eat. And I know you see a lot of YouTube videos how to feed this for free, how to feed that for free, how to do this, how to do that, how to do the other. Well, the first thing is nothing's free. You're going to have time, fuel, some sort of expense in everything. And just because it's not cash money out of your pocket spent, it'll draw you down other ways. You'll spend time, you should have been doing something else, end up hurting you financially. Most things aren't free. Most free ways of doing stuff really don't give you the best results. And like we tell you a thousand times, something as simple as getting a, the wrong type of hog that won't grow out. You got to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars and months and months and months trying to feed them out. You can lose bad. Or Cornish cross chickens. That's something that's come up a lot lately. You get Cornish cross chickens and they all die before you process them because they grew too fast. Nobody tells you that you can go get the roosters. A lot of times, the hatcher will give you roosters. Um, get some just laying hen roosters like White Legger or Delaware or Bard Rock roosters and raise them out. Takes a little longer. May even take a little bit more feed. But uh, they won't die on you. But you just get an old fashioned type fryer chicken that's, that's not like a Cornish Cross. Not the same kind of meat. But I'm sure we're forgetting something, but I'm drawing a blank and the traffic noise is picking up. But maybe that'll help you a little bit. And I know we're forgetting something. And I want you to understand, we want to encourage you to do this. We want you to succeed. It's important to me that you succeed. That's the whole reason we do this channel. And to succeed, you need good information. That's scarce on YouTube. It really is. I always remember, that though, though you may see 20 videos telling you the same thing. Where that came from was one channel put up a video that got a bunch of views and a bunch of likes, and they appeared to have made a little money on it. So then every other channel that can copies it word for word, hoping to get views and likes and make a little money, whether the information in it is based in any kind of fact whatsoever. And we have a lot of people ask us to do reviews of those videos. But I won't do it because those people are doing it to make money. I'm not comfortable messing with somebody's income.
if they would just put a disclaimer at the front, it was for entertainment purposes only, I'd be satisfied. But remember, we want to see you do it. We just want to see you succeed. You can do this stuff. You'll never apply a field by turning by turn it over in your mind. So that means you're going to have to get up and go try to do it. If it doesn't work right, try something different. It can be done. Maybe not like you've been told, but it can be done. It's not a get-rich-quick scheme. You're not going to be like a little house on the prairie and not have to spend a dollar on anything. The, the days of taking eggs to the store and trading them for something you need are over with. I've tried it. Uh, but just, you can do it. Get up and go try it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. There's a lot of good information in the comments in our videos. There's a lot of knowledgeable people that watch our videos that can give you different views on things. Because like I've told you a thousand times, first off, I don't know everything. I don't know everything. You can feel the ocean what I don't. I can tell you what works for me. I can tell you what works for people around me. I can tell you what works in my area. And I can probably get you good and started. But you need local information to really succeed. And that'll help you more than anything. I appreciate you watching. You'll have a good night.